the Lucas Oil Products Summer Nationals, a part of the Jasper Pulling Series. We're coming to you from the Wabash County Fairgrounds. Ted Jones here along with Tom McConnell. Brett Kepner will join us a little later on in the pit area, and we're ready. Wild wheel standing, two-wheel drive trucks. Don't go away. Series from Wabash, Indiana. Ted Jones, Tom McConnell, and Brett Kepner here with you for the Lucas Oil Summer National ATPA Series. And we're ready to go with the super modified two-wheel drive truck. Well, this first guy up, Boyd Presidious, former mini rod puller, going to get in with the big boys now, the two-wheel drive class. Normally, we see a lot more wheels standing, and I'm sure we will before the program is over. By the way, he calls this truck the booby trap. They come up with the cutest names, 202 feet. He sets the mark to beat. Well, coming up next is a guy that is out of Paducah, Kentucky, and Jerry Harden happens to have uh, the National Scouting Museum as a sponsor, a unique sponsor for a very unique truck. We're talking a Willie's Jeep. Watch the front end now as Jerry leads the line. Here he comes. Hey, straight and true. Nice job. Passes the 75-foot mark as indicated by the starting flagman. Look at the wheels go in the air, but that's going to be all for Jerry Harden. 176 feet, nowhere near that 202 mark. But here comes the heavy. Number one truck in America as we see Daryl Barner, the rare breed Chevy. Oh, man, he's flying. You can see why he's number one. He hasn't even slowed down. He's going to go all the way, Tom, full pull. Well, what do you expect if you put a supercharged Hemi in a full-size Chevy pickup body? Let's check in with Brett Kepner, who is with our full puller. It was perfectly uh, perfectly level all the way until the top end when you gave it the juice. Yeah, down here, it was bounced pretty, pretty good for me. Just barely across, though. Does that, uh, now, granted, you shut it off as soon as you saw the flag, but. Shut it off a little bit early. I had a little oil pressure flicker. Didn't want to tear it up. Hope we come back second round. Based on what you know, anybody else going to be with you? Yeah, there's a bunch of tough ones still back there. And one of those tough ones right now is spinning the supercharger and the engine over. They've primed it up. It'll breathe alcohol, and it comes to life about 2,000 horsepower for Mike Farabee and his 10-man 1950s vintage two-wheel drive 6,200-pound truck. Brett Kepner stopped by his pit area a little bit earlier today and filed this report. It's not very often that we show you rust on any kind of motorsports machine, but let's face it, if nothing else, that proves that this truck the Tin Man early 1950s Chevrolet has seen its fair share of work out there. The driver of this machine knows better than anybody where this thing came from. What is it? I think we originally got it out of a cornfield somewhere. <laughs> I mean, it had to be in poor shape when you originally found it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty rough shape. Uh, still had a couple fenders laying on it, but we uh, ended up working out the body and made the frame for it. And it's looking a little different than when we first found it. I'd imagine everything from the back of the cab back is new, right? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the rear end is out of the International 2 Plus 2 uh, tractor. Uh, we run the SES 40, ser 40 Series transmission and, of course, the uh, Keith Black Kimmy. Yeah, I don't think that came original with the early 50s Chevy. No, no. I think uh, we used to run a little template that had the original Chevrolet 6 owner rated at 180 horsepower. Unbelievable. So this yeah. thing found a new life in a whole lot better form than it ever could have hoped. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Buckeyes hooked up and ready to pull, Tom. Earlier this year, he hooked with us over in Shelbyville, Indiana. Had a good run. Expect he'll do pretty good today. Looks like he's on a straight pole headed down. Here come the tires and wheels, the front end up in the air. I love those red lights. And he's starting to veer off to the side. He had better correct. Uh-oh, he's out of bounds. Now, if you go out of bounds, you uh -oh. are disqualified. You cannot cross that white line. So it's like he never pulled at all. That's he gets right. a big zero. He was trying to take the tin man to the land of Oz, but instead he landed in the land of unwanted, disqualified pullers. What in the world is this thing? Richard Ryan Smith in a funny car. He's supposed to be at the drag strip. Hey, this is the world of truck pulling. Anything goes. A funny car pulling. Look where that engine's located. Clear up over that front axle. This guy knew what he was doing, but 261 feet will not get the job done. Don Finney's coming up next. He's out of Paris, Illinois. Don uh, used to be a mini rod puller. Had a nickname, the Mad Man Mini Rod Man. So, kind of taking it to the two-wheel drive ranks. Doing good with the up-and-gone machine. Sled's going to catch him. That's going to be the end of that. 279 feet still, not another full pull. The only full pull, Daryl Barner so far. But here comes the guy that may show us all the way home.
A few years ago, when the 1927 Ford Model T roaster body became so popular in the two-wheel drive class, one of the first guys that went to it was Dick McPherson out of Circleville, Ohio. Now, so far, these have been very, very popular body styles, but there's a new rule coming out in 1998 that will keep any new 23 Ts from being built. Dick, what's the basic reasoning behind the rule? Uh, I think the basic reason, they want to keep it more into the truck style, and uh, they're getting too many uh, T buckets in there, and uh, everybody kind of thinks we've got a weight advantage, but I think the main reason everybody's doing it is the expense of a body. A T bucket body is so much more reasonable than buying a whole pickup body and uh, redoing it in the paint job. Now, the big question is, is as successful as you've been with this body style for a number of years, are you planning on changing with the rules? I mean, you'll be grandfathered into it, but will you change to a full body vehicle? I uh, know. Uh, I think we'll stay where we are. Uh, we just built another T bucket for my son to drive. It's a more of a truck-like style, but uh, I don't know. I'm. Uh, I like pulling real well, and I'm getting kind of, you know, old and been at it a long time. Maybe I'm going to kind of slow up a little and turn more of it over to him. Never happened. Well, yeah, you're probably right. I mean, right now I'm down to. We're running the wedge head motor yet, and everybody else is running the Hemi style. And uh, the main reason I'm staying at the wedge, uh, just trying to prove to everybody that I can make the wedge wedge work with the Hemis, but. Right now, I'm down to, uh, we're making usually pistons every run. We put two or three pistons every run in the motor, and it's, that's getting expensive after a while. So what you're saying, basically, is despite any rules changes, Dick McPherson isn't changing anything anywhere for anybody. No, we're pretty well staying where we are, and uh, <laughs> we pretty well, you know, like the circle we're running, Jasper engine, uh, Valco engine, or Valco uh, Cincinnati, and everybody is a pretty good group to work for, and it's everything's working great for us. Well, did you know he never fully actually answered the question? You never know what Tricky Dick's going to do next, except pull his heart out. And here he goes. He's on a straight run. Look, he's moved clear over to the far side of the course there, Tom. Now you're trying to get the extra traction to make that full pull. He's done it. He's done it. Dick McPherson on a full pull. We have more two-wheel drive trucks coming up. Drive class 10 seems to be loaded with guys that used to drive mini rods. Here's another former mini rod puller, Mike Hodges. Seville, Ohio, where he calls home the run for cover T bucket. Big KB Hemi up front. He tried the same thing down the far side of the course. It didn't work, so TJ Tatum will try it. Last year at Wabash, they did the same thing the Tin Man did out of bounds. Not going to do that this year. They are making sure they keep that truck in bounds at Wabash. Well, they started down the out of bounds line and now moved clear over to the center. 273 feet. That won't work. Here comes McPherson, number two, the son, Jeff. This pulling is a big family operation, and Jeff McPherson definitely in contention for the Jasper points. He would like to run it out the end just like Dad. No such luck. About 20 feet short, so we only have about three full pulls. But let's look at Jeff's pull one more time and notice if we see something unusual, like a blower belt breaking. Yeah, buddy, that took care of the 20 feet shortage there. Had that blower belt not broken, he was on a pretty good pull, Tom. He was hooked in the track very good, and blower belt went, and so he stopped. Time to bring out the young gun, Steve Grouse from Georgetown, Kentucky, with an S10 Chevrolet truck. Well, this truck used to be owned by the Sullivans. Donnie and Danny Sullivan campaigned this truck for many, many years, just sold it, and at this point, Mr. Grouse can still keep the young gun name on the side. He started out over there in the far side of the course. Now he's moved into the middle, weaving back and forth. And you know, that's not the way to get a full pull. He'll settle for 279 feet. A lot of smoke out of one bank there. Yeah, that's not a good sign. This is Rich Sanderford from the Queen City, Cincinnati, Ohio. He is the owner of Valco of Cincinnati. Well, Rich Sanderford only knows one way to drive these cheap black Hemis on absolute unmerciful gill, and that's just what he's doing now. You know, that thing looks like a four by four. He's keeping the front end on the ground and that's what you need to do. 283 feet and one inch, not quite good enough. Well, here comes Rich Sanford's neighbor, Chris Schultz, also out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Got a T-bucket action here coming. Guy also has a four engine modified tractor. Let's see if the T-bucket is the big advantage. Oh, he's going completely out of shape. Actually went sideways across the course, 262 feet. No one close to that full pull thus far. Well, here's a guy that's been doing this for many, many, many years. If there's ever a truck pulling Hall of Fame. Lige McLean's got a good chance of going into it with the rowdy T out of Cynthiana, Kentucky. You can see the green flag hanging out. He can leave any time after that green flag comes up. He's on a good pull. 
front end slightly in the air. Now he begins spinning. Does he have enough? No. 278 feet. Jim Lyons will be our next puller with his stitches truck. But meanwhile, Brett Kepner is down on the line and has found someone with some difficulty. Well, Ted, just a few spots before they get ready to pull the Jasper team's thrashing. This is kind of unusual in this sport. What's going on, Russell? We broke a stud, warming it up, and let the rocker arm come off. Well, in that case, you were lucky you're starting this late. Yeah, starting, warmed it up a little bit, and we just found it. You're going to be able to fix it to get up there? We're just about together. Go for it. Well, while he makes that last minute repair, and I hope he can make it up in time to make the pull, Jim Lyons hooked up to the sled. He's ready to go. You know, Ted, the last two guys you saw pull have been pulling Chevrolet engines. Almost everybody else out here has been running key black Hemi, so it's kind of unique to still see some people running the Chevy blocks. Lyons is on a trip, not quite enough, 285 feet, 11 inches, just a little short for the bow tie powered machine. Oh, a little of a alcohol fire there in the headers. Yeah, get the hot dogs out, three weenie roast. Here comes Russell Croft, looks like they made that repair. The Indiana Crews on a good pass with a Chevrolet El Camino. Looks like he's got a good run going, but uh-oh, smoke under the hood. Got trouble there, Ted. A lot of smoke underneath the car. Now fire out of one bank of those headers. Hopefully no serious damage to that engine. Needless to say, he will not be in the pull-up. There's going to be one, and with more on that, here's Brett. Well, Ted, this two-wheel drive pull-off is extremely important for obvious reasons. You've got the number one and number two ranked drivers in the entire season. Jay's going at it. But it's going to be interesting to see who lines up where. The rare breed team made that first full pull lined up in the far right-hand side of the lane. On the other hand, it'll be interesting to see where Dick McPherson himself lines up because he sent his son down the far left, and it didn't work. Ah, but Brett, it didn't work because of a broken blower belt. Now, earlier in the day, Brett took a look at the rare breed up close. Well, Ted, you got to admit, this is one of the prettiest Chrysler Hemis you'll see in any form of motorsports. But a wider look will prove this is one of the most beautiful vehicles ever created for the sport of pulling. Indeed, the Varner Brothers rare breed Hemi-powered Chevrolet two-wheeler out of Midway, Kentucky, has been voted the Lucas Oil best appearing vehicle of this event. And that is easily one of the most prestigious awards in the entire Jasper Racing Engine series. As a matter of fact, it's not unusual to see teams spend more time making their vehicle look beautiful than it is tuning the thing before the pull because of the prestige of that particular trophy. But this one goes to the Varner Brothers, and rightfully so. A beautiful truck, Brett. Good pick. You know, if there were a best performing award, he might win that too. But we're ready for a two-truck pull-off. Daryl Varner will be first. These guys have been at it all year long. And one thing on Daryl's mind is the fact that Dick McPherson won this last year. They have changed the setup on the sled. The weight moves forward much faster now. 289 feet is going to be the number has to beat that his wife and Jeff his son are on the sidelines watching let's see what they see uh oh deja vu from Shelbyville Indiana McPherson breaks this time in Shelbyville it was Varner who broke and Dick went right by him